So our next speaker is uh, Singing Li, and is going to speak about diverse image-to-image -image translation via disentangled representations. Hi, everyone. This is Xinging Li. Uh, this is a joint work with Hong Yuzhen, Jia Binghuang, Mandu Xinj, and Ming Xuan Yang. Image to image translations aims to learn the mapping between two visual domains. For example, colorizations, we learn to map gray to color images. Image synthesis, we learn to map semantic label to real image. We can even learn the mapping for two domains that corresponding data does not even exist. For example, horse to zebra. There are some challenges in image-to-image -image translations. First, although some translation can be learned with peer training data, but in most cases, peer training data is scarce or even does not exist. Second, most translations, no matter peer or not, are in nature multimodal, that is one to many mapping. I will introduce how previous work dealt with these two challenges. First, let's put aside all constraints. Assuming we have peer training data, we can ask the model to learn the mapping functions. We can train the model with adversarial laws that a discriminator attempts to discriminate the peer is real or fake. We can illustrate the translation by this. It encodes the source domain onto a latent space, then decode it to the target domain. Now, in many cases, the training data is unpaired. What can we do? We first perform the forward translations, just like the previous cases. And then we perform the backward translations. The model can be trained with cycle consistency, that is, the reconstruction loss. Uh, we can illustrate the translation like this. It includes a forward encoding decoding and a backward encoding decoding. Some works make an assumption that the latent space is shared. Now, let's see how to tackle the multimodal constraint. Assuming we have peer training data, one domain provides uh, uh, common information like the shape and uh, contour, and the other domains provide the style information like color. These two components are used to reconstruct the target images, and it can be trained with the reconstruction loss. We can illustrate the translation like this. It augments an additional space for the target domain. Our model combines the advantages of the previous methods and deal with the settings that can generate diverse results with unpaired data. We propose to explicitly disentangle the image representation into a domain-invariant content space and a domain-specific attribute space. We abbreviate our model as street. Note that although some previous work also uses an augmented space, they do not enforce the disjoint of a content and attribute space. In the following, I will explain in detail how these disentangled representations can help multimodal mapping as well as training with unpaired data. Let's revisit the usage of uh, attribute space. Uh, how can the additional attribute space help the multimodal mapping? One domain will provide a uh, domain invariant content feature. And then we can randomly sample in the attribute space to generate diverse results. With the attribute space, we can perform example guided translations. Given the image of desired attribute, we can perform the translations with the MAPIP attribute representation. Now, how can we try train the model with our peer data with the help of a disentangled representation? Given two unpaired images, 
we encode them into the content and uh, content and attribute features. And since the content space is shared between two domains, we can swap the content feature. And then we perform the first translations. The translated result U uh, should contain Y content and X style, while the V should contain X content and Y style. Then we perform the same procedure again. We encode, we swap, and we perform the second translation. The result of a second translation should reconstruct the original images. We call it the cross cycle consistency. Please find the implementation details and other loss functions in the paper or visit us in the post session. However, cross cycle consistency alone cannot guarantee the disentanglement of a content and attribute space. Therefore, we apply a content discriminator on the content features. The discriminator aims to discriminate which domain is the content features from. So with the adversarial training, the content, uh, content encoder will attempt to encode only the content invariant features. Here are some generated results of our model. Uh, all the translations are multi-model. We roughly divide the translation into two categories, one with only the color variations and one with shape variations. Our model performs well on both cases. We first show the color changes cases, including the seasonal changes, winter to summer, and the real image to artwork. Then we show two shape variation cases, the photo portrait to artwork portrait. and cat to dog. We can perform example guided translations. One domain provides a content, the other provides an attribute. The translated result will contains the desired attribute. Since the content space is shared, uh, we can even perform the translation within the same domains. One domain, uh, one to provide content, and one main image provide attribute. The content and attributes come from the same domain, and we perform the translation. Note that we do not include these translations during training. We compare our methods with several baselines. First we inject additional noise vector into the cycle gain. However, without the explicitly constraint on the additional noise vectors, the cycle gain will simply ignore the additional noise vector. Second, we generate a pseudo pair data by cycle gain and train it with bicycle gain. It does show some variations. However, since cycle gain itself suffers from more collapse to some extent, the variation is limited. And the generated pseudo ground truths, the quality are not uh, uniformly well. So the translation result contains some detailed artifacts. We evaluate the realism by user study. We provide two images and ask the user which image is more realistic. The left hand side is a comparison of other methods with our models. The bar shows the percentage of a preference in comparisons. The right-hand side is a comparison with the real images. We perform better than most baseline. Cycle can perform better in quality at the cost of diversity. We evaluate diversity with the LPIPS matrix. It can be viewed as the average feature distance within the collection of images. Our model performs uh, better than the unimodal methods, as well as the baseline multimodal methods. Now, we demonstrate the importance of the content discriminator. 
Qualitatively, the model can still generate diverse results without a content discriminator. However, without the help of a content discriminator to disentangle the domain invariant content features and the domain specific attribute features, the translation results fail to capture desirable details like the color of tree and sky. It can only capture the global color variation. Quantitatively, our model is more realistic and more diverse with the help of a content discriminator. Recently, there are some concurrent work also uh, propose a similar idea despite some interesting differences. We encourage everyone to check them up to have a better understanding on this topic. In conclusion, we propose to leverage disentangled representations with the help of a cross-cycle consistency to achieve diverse image-to-image -image translation without the peer training data. Thank you very much for your attention. The code and data are available. Please visit us at the, uh, at the poster sessions. Our poster number is 89. Thank you. Are there any questions? Sure. Yeah. I have a question on your left, on your right, sorry. Um, you mentioned three concurrent works at the end. Um, one of them is in the ECCV, the multi -unit, multimodal unit. Can you briefly describe the differences between your paper and that one? Okay, so the overall idea is similar to use the cross-cycle consistency. Uh, the difference is lying how we can handle, how we deal with the contents and attribute features. For example, the M units, they apply the, uh, some techniques from the style transfer. They use the ADA in to incorporate the attribute features into the, into the content features. So for us, we have uh, two different strategies. Uh, the one is to simply concatenate the contents and the attribute features. So it works better on the, uh, on the, on the color variation cases. And the second one, we use some technique like the feature matching. So it works better on the shape variation cases. So the, the high level idea is similar. That is to, uh, to, to, disentang to disentangle the space and use a cross section consistency to reconstruct the input images. Uh, but the difference is lies in the usage of how, can we, how to handle these two uh, features in the different spaces. Great, thank you. In the upper stairs, here, waiting. Uh, so thank you for your talk. So uh, from the pair data, we relax the constraint to the unpaired one by cyclic consistency. And now it becomes to another relaxation to multimodality. So uh, it's kind of a broad question, but what do you think is the next direction of the research? So it seems like for the uh, researchers as a newbie, like it is really hard to find a, a pitfall or the hole after uh, which I have to pursue. So if there's any insight, please give us a good direction. OK, so basically, uh, I think they are still, they are still, although the setting is uh, already solved like this uh, on pair and with the multi-model mapping, but for the quality and for the data, because now the translation is highly dependent on the data. Uh, for example, we need to have uh, two domains that is quite similar, for example, winter to summer, or for the cat the dog, the cat dog, the data of a cat and dog need to be like the center crop it and to have a deep, have a, have a detail online. So how to make our generator or discriminator be more aware of the differences and to capture the high level statistics of domains, that is, uh, that is the one direction to further improve the, uh, further improve the, these topics. And, I think there are also possibilities in to applying the same technique in the videos. For example, uh, in addition to like a style or the content for the video, there are more dimensions and more, uh, more possibility to explore, for example, for the motions and for the background, for the foreground. So this is also some interesting topic to, to work on. Uh, for example, the video, to, uh, video translation, something like that. So I think there are still uh, many works to do on this topic. Okay, let's thank the speaker again.